Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Dreamforce, and welcome to this session uh, with an introduction to the Salesforce platform. My name is Dan van Santen. I'm from the Netherlands, working as a cloud architect uh, for the local Salesforce subsidiary. So first, the slide that you've probably seen before, as a publicly traded company, we need to advise you to base your purchasing decisions on what's currently available. Let's now talk a little about the Salesforce platform. Uh, many people know Salesforce from our CRM and SaaS offerings, but we're actually also a platform vendor, uh, selling our platform as a platform as a service that allows you to build your own custom apps around your customer uh, in a very fast way. Um, the platform provides a very rich set of capabilities and features that will help you to build your custom apps around your customers, around your partners, and around your employees. The apps that you will build will come with trust and security just right embedded within them as they leverage the same uh, platform as our SaaS offerings uh, do. And with three releases per year, you'll get automatic uh, updates and innovations. And examples of these are, for example, the Einstein artificial intelligence platform, but also IoT technology that will help you connect uh, different devices and sensors, for example, to the platform and allow you to ingest all that data. And of course, with the ecosystem around the platform and the app exchange, uh, you'll find tons of applications and components that you can use to enrich your own applications that you can build on this platform. So if we take a little uh, look back in history with traditional means of software development, uh, we would be purchasing hardware, software, networking equipment, and basically piecing together a software development stack. With Salesforce, that's not really necessary. As a cloud vendor, we provide you with this platform as a service from the cloud. And this really allows you to focus on building your own applications, and essentially focusing on challenging the business um, challenges that you need to focus yourselves on. I spoke about the, let's say, the, the wide array of capabilities and features that the platform offers. And it's actually the same set of features and capabilities that we use ourselves to build, for example, the sales cloud and service cloud products on. And examples of these capabilities are workflow, data modeling, sharing rules, reporting, dashboarding, and UI customizations. So in that way, it's a real fast path to help you prototype and help you build your applications. If we speak about customizations inside of the platform, there's actually three layers where you can, let's say, create customizations. And they're on the slide as we speak. And there are customizations on the data model. So you can create extra fields, extra objects, and so forth. There's customizations on the user interface. So putting extra fields on the UI, changing the position of different fields, uh, adding components. If you're familiar with Lightning components, we'll touch that in a small demo as well. And there's business logic, uh, like workflow, for example. They can all be customized. And the way you customize inside of the platform can be both declaratively, but also programmatically. Declarati declaratively meaning it's relatively point and click. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, we'll uh, use the setup menu to do most of these things. For programmatic customizations, we can think of Apex code, but also lightning components that involve lots of JavaScript, Visual Force, uh, but also invoking the APIs from any system that needs to connect to Salesforce. So some tools that you have available to develop your applications onto the platform um, and make these customizations. First of all, there's this setup menu. If you're a Salesforce user, chances are 99.9% .9 you've touched this before. This is the area where you, um, again, use point and click means of customizations. And an example of this is that you can create a custom object that will hold information inside of the platform. Standard objects are accounts, opportunities, and leads, for example. But custom objects can hold anything you want. Once you create a custom object, the platform itself will automatically create storage inside of the database and generate a default user interface on top of this for you. You don't have to do anything about that yourself. <coughs> Besides the setup menu, we also bring you a developer console. And this is the default go-to point for everything that is programmatic. <coughs> There's a small screenshot in the middle uh, of some Apex class here, for example. But you can also uh, create and write your Lightning components in that uh, developer console. 
And as of winter 18, Salesforce DX, the developer experience, is now GA. And Salesforce DX provides a completely new way of developing on the Salesforce platform. First of all, it's source driven. So no longer a Salesforce org or environment is in the lead as the point of truth. But all customizations and configurations inside of the platform will now be saved as source code in a version control system of your choice. And this really helps in uh, automating your testing processes, your deployment and development processes. Besides it being um, uh, source driven, it's also very rapid. We give you uh, ephemeral scratch orgs that, are, that can be spun up automatically to do some automated testing and so forth. And finally, we give you a command line tool which really helps you to work towards continuous delivery. And the ultimate goal of this is to give you flexibility and freedom of the tools of choice as a developer and being able to work uh, towards a very quick time to deployment and facilitate that continuous delivery that is so common in application delivery, uh, in the application delivery world the, these days. So a short demo, and we will cre actually create an application on the platform. And the hypothetical use case here is about an animal shelter. An animal shelter, shelter will, will receive homeless cats in this case, and we will need to keep track of those cats, but also keep track of people who are actually interested in adopting such a cat. What we will do is create the application itself and leverage a bit of Einstein in, uh, in a particular piece of it called Einstein Vision, its image recognition to help us classify those cats. So let me briefly switch to my demo console. So in this screen, I'm logged in to a Salesforce environment. And what I'd like to do first is navigate to the setup menu. And inside of the setup menu, we will go and uh, cr create an object to hold all information about cats. An easy way to do this is by leveraging the schema builder. And the schema builder itself gives us a visual representation of all the data objects that we already have on the platform. And I just selected one, which I pre-created. It's called interested person. And that object will hold all records for people being interested in cats. What I'll do next is switch to the elements tab and drag an extra object onto the screen. The label for this object will be cat. It's plural, will be cats, of course. I will allow reports uh, and maybe some field history that will allow us to track that and save it. So again, this creates storage in the database and will also automatically generate a user interface on top of this. The cat now has a name and a few uh, default uh, fields like created by last modified and owner. What I'll also do is introduce a pick list field that will hold the breed of the cat involved here. And the pick list field will be called cat breed. So that's all good. I could give it a description field to hold the breed of this cat and the values. And we could either have a Bengal cat in this instance, a Sphinx, or a British short hair. And I'll be able to save that. So that's all good. So now we have two objects that are relevant to our use case here. And I'll actually close the schema builder for now. So the object's there, but we need a little bit more to be able to have a real app out of this use case. And the first thing I'll do is to create a custom tab that we can use inside of the user interface. And in order to do that, I'll switch over to user interface and navigate to tabs. In here, I would want to create a custom tab for a custom object. And the first object I'll choose is the cat custom object. I can choo use a, uh, choose a cat tab style here. Unfortunately, we don't have any animals. So let me just choose alarm clock for now. I'll click Next. I'll confirm the details as we'll make this tab visible to all user profiles inside of the platform. And I'm not going to include it into any app yet because I haven't created our uh, cat rescue app just yet and I'll save this custom tab. We'll quickly create another one. <coughs> and this will be for the interested person object. Choose a tab style again. And here, let's choose people. I think that looks fairly nice. Assign it to all profiles. And again, don't include it into any app just yet. I'll click Save. 
So now we have created the tabs and the objects. Let's now just uh, create the app that will consume all of this. So we'll go to apps on the left-hand side of the screen and open the app manager. Inside the app manager, I can create a new lightning app. And we'll call this lightning app cat rescue. The developer name gets, <coughs> gets automatically generated. Uh, an app to keep track of cats and people interested. I can even choose an icon for the, uh, for the app. Might become pretty handy, as you will see. So I'll choose that one, open it. <coughs> and I could choose the color of the app, uh, but I'll leave that for, for the defaults right now. Standard navigation will be good for this app, so I'll just click Next. And I don't need a utility bar. And then I can select the items that I will include inside of this application. And of course, we are interested in the cats available. What we also want is interested people. Let's add that. And we want groups, the chatter group. So we'll touch on that later a little bit. So we'll click Next. Then we assign it to your user profile. And as I'll only be using a system administrator for this demo, that will be the only profile I will assign. But in a real life scenario, you will assign the user profiles that will use your apps. And I'll click Save and Finish. So the app is now done. We can go to the app launcher, which is the nine dotted icon on the upper left side of the screen to give us an overview of all the apps available in this Salesforce environment. And as you can see, the Cat Rescue app is now available. If we open that, we will see that we have three tabs as we just selected. It's the Cats tab, Interested People, and Groups. So let's create some data. First, create some cats. And as we have some musicians at DreamFest this week, let's call our cats Lenny Kravitz. Create a new one. I think Alicia Keys is also nice. And let's do James Hatfield. And we'll click Save. So we've now created three different cats inside of the platform. We can do the same with interested people. Oh, they're already there, so we don't have to create them. That's very nice. And that's actually all it takes to create a very rudimentary app that will allow us to yeah, basically create records in a object, a custom object that we have created. But we want to extend the use case a little bit more because this still is just simplistic registration of cats, but we need more. And in order to do so, I'll switch over to another Salesforce environment that has a few things pre-configured as I can't do everything in 20 minutes. Uh, and what we will do now is start using Einstein image recognition to classify the cats that we've uploaded. So what we will do first is navigate to Lenny. And as you can see, the cat breed field hasn't been classified yet. We don't know what it is. If I go to the gear icon on the top right side of the screen, I can edit this page. And if I edit the page, we will see the Lightning Application Builder. The Lightning Application Builder, and you can learn more about this in any, let's say, uh, session on Lightning components that colleagues of me are hosting. But this will allow us to drag components on side of the canvas that will be part of the app. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have a component called Einstein Vision Cat Uploader. And I'll drag this to the utmost right co uh, uh, column on the screen, and I'll save this layout for this page. If I now click back, I'll be transferred back to, to Lenny. And we can see that the uploader is now available inside of the application. Let's now upload a file. So. Lenny, I think, is a British cat in this particular instance, and we say open. What happens behind the scenes is that this image is being sent to Einstein. It's being recognized, and based on a uh, predefined and learned model, it will recognize what type of cat this is. And for some reason, it's taking a little while. So let's give it a small moment. Not very typical. There we are. Took a while, but it worked. <coughs> so what we can see now is that Lenny has been classified as a British shorthair. 
The way you would train these models is create zip files with only pictures of British short hairs, another zip file with only pictures of Bengal cats, for example. You send it to Einstein Vision, and it will start to automatically learn what type of cat is what. And you can send it another picture like we've just did, and it will recognize what type of cat it is. So this is part of the story. We now know what type of cat Lenny is. The next step is to get all the people that are looking for a particular type of cat in touch, or at least inform them that we have a new cat available. And in order to do that, I want to leverage a uh, process builder. So in this org, I'll go to the setup menu, then scroll down a little to process automation on the left-hand side, and we'll open process builder. In here, I'll create a new process, which we'll call new cat to chatter. And the process will start when a record changes. Click Save. The first thing to do is to specify the object. And this will be acting upon the cat custom object. And the process should fire whenever the record is created or edited. So we'll click Save. Then we add some criteria. And for example, we want to check whether we are having a new Bengal cat being sent to us. The condition to evaluate would be that the cat breed itself, we'll choose that field, would equal Bengal. And under the advanced tab or, or pull down menu, we want to check this in order to make sure that we will only evaluate this when the record changes and only when the cat breed field changes its contents, not for just any change to the record. And we'll click Save. Then we add an action, and the action in this instance will be to post to chatter, inform Bengal interest group, and we will post to a chatter group that I have pre-created for this demo. And a chatter group will be Bengal interest. The message that we will post will be a new Bengal cat has arrived. And save this. Finally, we activate this process, and we confirm that it's activated. If we now go back, and Lenny has already been classified, but let's just quickly move to Alicia Keys here, and also upload a picture of a Bengal cat this time. Again, Einstein will do its job and start classifying this cat. And as we can see, the cat breed is now filled, and it is a Bengal cat. If we then switch over to groups, <coughs> where, we, where we can find our chatter groups, and move to the Bengal interest group, we can see that just now, a message has been posted to this chatter group. And in real life, you can have all your interested people being subscribed to new chatter posts to this group. They will be informed, and they can come out and check this new cute and lovely little cat. So far for the demo, let's wrap this up with the remaining slides. So the colors don't look that nice, but I think it'll do. So <coughs> what we've done in the demo, create an object, create some custom tabs, create the application, hold some information, use Process Builder, and use Einstein Vision. But the whole platform is about building apps not only related to animal shelters and keeping track of cats. You can build apps for virtually any department. Think of IT, HR, and finance. And the nice thing is, if you're already using the Salesforce platform, for example, to automate your sales and service processes, you can leverage all that information in your custom apps as well. And it becomes pre-connected out of the box. There's no integration to be done or whatsoever. Last thing for me to do for to you is to really recommend you to take the next step on Trailhead and really earn the Platform Development Basics badge. Uh, Trailhead's a really fun way to learn more about the platform and gain experience. Uh, you can earn some badges and points. It's a, it's a really nice experience, so I would say go check it out. This was my introduction to the Salesforce platform. If there are any questions, I'll be available to answer them for you. And I'd like to thank you very much to, uh, for attending this. Thank you.